The Flash might be the fastest man alive, but it feels like his movie has been traveling in slow motion ever since it was first announced back in October 2014. Yes, Barry Allen's first solo adventure has taken almost a decade to make his way to the theaters. Or maybe even longer if you count previous attempts to make a movie about Flash. Turbulent times in the DC Extended Universe and a global pandemic kept the Flash locked away in development hell for years. And when star Ezra Miller began making headlines for all the wrong reasons, many wondered if the movie would be released at all. And now we are just a few months away from The Flash landing in theaters. My face. About five years after it was originally slated for release. That's kind of fitting since there was a running gag in comics about how Barry Allen was chronically late to everything. Following a teaser released at DC Fandom last year, the super-sized Super Bowl trailer for The Flash has dropped a whole bunch of bombshells about the story and the superheroes we can expect to see in it. So what is The Flashpoint? The Flashpoint has passed through the hands of numerous screenwriters and a revolving door of directors became attached to the project and then left it before it finally settled with Andy Muschietti. But over the years, one constant in this sea of turmoil was the fact that the movie would be loosely based on the comic book event Flashpoint. In fact, at one point, that was even the title. In the Flashpoint comic art, Barry Allen travels back in time using the speed force to save the life of his mother, who was murdered by the reverse Flash when Barry Allen was a child. However, by saving his mother's life, he completely rewrites history, and not for the better. In the new world that Barry wakes up in, Wonder Woman's homeland of Themyscira is going to war with Aquaman's underwater nation of Atlantis. Bruce Wayne was sure dead when he was a child instead of his parents, so Thomas Wayne became a more brutal version of Batman and Martha Wayne became the Joker. While the Flash movie won't be an exact adaptation of Flashpoint comic arc, DC Studios CEO James Gunn has said that the Flash movie effectively resets everything, providing a neat segue from the old DCU into the shiny new DC universe. So even if Barry does get back to his own world, it might not look quite the same way he left it. The first actual voice we hear in the new Flash trailer is that of Michael Keaton's Batman. The beginning of it plays out in a fashion very similar to the first Flash teaser that dropped back in October 2021, with Keaton saying, we are voiceover, tell me something you can go anywhere, another timeline, another universe, so why do you want to stay and fight to save this one? And he saying this, we see footage of his call on the floor. If that reminds you of the image of Batman's broken, discarded mask in The Dark Knight Rises, then you should be prepared for the next shot, which shows Batman's cave fluttering out behind him as he rides what looks like the Batboard motorcycle from the Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight trilogy. Already the trailer is mixing and matching the iconography of different Batman in keeping with the multiverse flashpoint thrust. Keaton's voice comes back in around the 87 second mark asking the Flash if he wants some help fighting Zod in the defenseless new world with no metahumans that he created through his time travel. We see the old 1989 and 1992 Batmobile and bats flying out of the bat caves as Danny Elfman's theme music comes creeping in. When Keaton's face finally appears on screen, he is wearing a bat suit that looks more like the one Wal Kilmer wore in Batman Forever. Maybe this was his revenge for the Keaton-led Batman Return sequel that never happened. Then Keaton delivers his line, yeah, I'm Batman, for all it's worth before leaping into action. He is the one who lowers his face to reveal Superman's cousin. Kara floating in the sky toward the end of the trailer, but of course he is not the only Batman in this trailer. 
We hear Keaton right from the beginning, but before we see him, Ben Affleck's Batman warns Barry Allen about the dangers of mucking around with timeline. There's a shot of Barry and his alternate self walking upon Wayne Manor, which looks a little bit different from the scene we saw in Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice. It also not the same Wayne Manor we saw in Tim Burton's Batman movies. If you were to go into the past, Bruce tells Barry, you have no idea what the consequences could be. Barry insists that he could fix things and Bruce says that he could also destroy everything. That's the last we see of Banaflag, but it's not the last we see of Batterflag in this trailer. Upon closer inspection, that's not the bat pole we saw at the beginning, but rather a slightly different bat cycle with two smaller ties, which Batflag appears to be riding as it zooms under a police car that's tumbling across the street. Since Batflag never got his own solo movie and Keaton's appearance in this shelf bad girl film won't be seen in the light of the day, it's nice to see both of them make a return in this trailer as it goes full circle back to Zord's invasion in Man of Steel and beginning of the DC Extended Universe. Michael Shannon's General Zord made his debut in the first DCU movie, Man of Steel, where the memorable controversially got his neck snapped by Superman. His appearance in the new trailer for The Flash is actually the second time he's returned unexpectedly. In Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice, Zord's body was pilfered by Lex Luthor. In the new timeline created by Barry's interference with history, Superman is not around to stop Zord's invasion of the planet. And it looks like we will see a war between Zord's forces and Earth's remaining superhero in lieu of the war between Themyscira and Atlanta from the comics. Fortunately for us fragile human, there are quite a few superheroes in the trailer. One twist in the Flash movie that was not in the Flashpoint comics, there are two Barry Allens in this timeline. Barry 1 runs into his doppelganger, whom we will creatively name Barry 2, outside his childhood home. Barry 2 looks just as shocked to see Barry as Barry 1. And Barry 1 is to see Barry 2, but the two of them team up to figure out what's going on with the timeline and how they can stop Zord from taking over Earth. With so much chaos, having a second flash around can only be a good thing, right? Well, not certainly. First of all, there's a still big question mark over the identity of Nora Allen's killer in the DC Universe. Second of all, it seems unlikely that the Flash will simply make Zord the main villain again been there they have already done that before third of all the fact that barry 2 is wearing a lot of yellow jacket which is a red flag it is because yellow is the color of the costume worn by reverse flash the speedster that killed barry's mother in the comics the speedster that killed barry's mother in the comics maybe we are just being paranoid but it wouldn't be totally surprising if a third act twist revealed that barry one's true enemy has been by his side all along after the penis of general zord in the trailer barry realizes i created a world with no matter humans and now there's no one to defend us in the flashman comic arc the timeline was changed so that kolel instead of being found and raised by the Kents on a nice farm in Smallville, Kansas was discovered as a baby by the government, raised in tortured isolation and named Subject 1. The discovery of Flashpoint Superman is recreated in The Flash, but it's not Kal-El that Barry finds hidden away by the government, it's his cousin Kara zor which is played by Sasha Kal. In the Flash, Supergirl is set to star in her own upcoming solo movie, Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow. Thought it's currently unknown if Sasha will reprise her role. This is technically a, a Supergirl from another timeline, but it would make sense to introduce the new official Supergirl here, rather than casting multiple Supergirls for the DC Universe. 
It looks like Barry Allen and Batman organize a prison break for Supergirl and she then returns the favor by coming to Barry's rescue. There is already a Supergirl suit ready to go when Barry finds her, which might arrive with her when her port landed on Earth. In the comics, Kara was evacuated from Krypton at the same time as her cousin, but her port crashed of course and ended up in the Phantom Zone where she was trapped for many years. Since the Flash is mixing and matching different origin story from the comics, it will be interesting to find out how this version of Kara ended up in such a miserable place. And the Flash will finally arrive in theaters on June 16, 2023. So we end our video here. If you have any kind of question regarding this movie, feel free to ask in the comments below. We'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.